Luring has become a really popular salmon run strategy as of late in the Splatoon community. It's seen as the best strategy and is used by many top players. But anyone who plays it freelance and doesn't interact with the community might not know what luring is and why it's so loved. While I am someone who only plays casually and freelance, I've had multiple rounds where my teammates practiced luring. I've also watched a ton of gameplay from overfishers. So in this video, I'll explain what luring is, why people adopt it, and some of its pros and cons. So what's this technique? Well, luring consists of letting the bosses come to you near the basket, then splatting them, instead of what players usually do where they go to the boss as soon as they spawn on the shore. You won't see this practice often, especially if you play freelance in a low rank, and it's because a majority of people just don't think of playing this game mode that way and just want to get rid of the bosses as fast as possible. The end goal of luring is to get the most amount of eggs you can, and by splatting bosses near the basket, you don't need to risk separating yourself from your team to get eggs on the other side of the map or wasting precious time. Because even if you throw the eggs, it is marginally faster to just splat the boss near the basket and put them in immediately. Not every boss can be lured though, and some have unique behavior that may be confusing. So I made a list with three categories of bosses, those you can lure, those with set positions, and those you cannot lure to make it easier. So let's first go over the boss salmonids you can lure. We have Scrapper, Moz, Steel Eel, Flipper Flopper, and Steelhead who walks really slowly, and Slamon Lid. There's a common misconception that you can't lure Slamon Lid and that's just not true. It keeps its distance but it does go near the player that's closest to it when it's and it tends to move closer during the round if no one splats it. These salmonids are all fairly easily lured near the basket, so it's best to be a little patient and let them come to you as to not waste any eggs. Then we have the ones with set positions, Drizzler, Flyfish, and Fishstick. Have you ever noticed that these three bosses always move to the same spots? Well, it's not a coincidence, these three are special in the way that they have set positions. Drizzler always has a spot right next to the basket and it's the perfect perfect time to splat it, but it also has a few other spots that it moves to that are within egg throwing distance. Flyfish is a bit trickier since its spots are usually far away from the basket, however its positions always make it easier to throw bombs from certain spots, so try to find where you have more success throwing bombs at it so you can get rid of it faster. Fish stick though is different. While it is completely immobile and like the two others in this category, it's almost always in a spot where you can throw the eggs directly in the basket get from the top of it. You don't have to worry about luring these three since you just can't, but we are missing two boss salmonids here, two that often wipe teams within seconds who belong in the final category of this list, those who stay on the shore. Stinger and Big Shot, these two are the reason that I love the longer ranged weapons in Salmon Run. Since they spawn on the shore, they are particularly deadly due to the other salmonids who spawn right with them, so anyone who goes to kill them alone will most likely get splatted away from their teammates. Now there's no real trick here, and those eggs will probably end up lost unless you know how to take advantage of snatchers, which is basically a trick where you let them get the eggs, then splat them over the basket so they drop the eggs near it. Those two bosses are still worth killing though because one of them isn't that bad, but more than that is incredibly dangerous and can wipe out the team very fast. Now that you know all that stuff, let's talk a bit about when you can lure. It's most useful during normal tide and low tide where eggs often end up very far away. I don't recommend using it on high tide though because it's incredibly easy to get overwhelmed and on high tide the eggs are usually very close anyways unless you're playing on Mariner's Bay. For night waves you can only really lure during glowfly rush and grillers and it's a cool experiment to stay next to the basket with your team if everyone's experienced but I personally would not do that because I find it terrifying and it's already pretty easy to lose those on freelance. Basically you can lure whenever a boss isn't close enough to the basket. As I mentioned in a previous video, I usually like to lure them to at least a throwing distance from the basket, but it's preferable when they're closer. But like any other technique, it's not perfect and it's not for everyone. So here are some of the pros and cons to luring so you can know its strengths and weaknesses. It has a ton of fantastic advantages, like the ability to stay with your team and avoiding useless deaths on the other side of the map, being able to get the eggs in fast without 
without having to spend extra ink to throw them. It is overall a very practical and efficient way to play Salmon Run, however, it's still incredibly hard to orchestrate it in freelance. While I see people attempting it sometimes, most players just kill bosses at the shore without a second thought, even in Executive VP. There is also the fact that someone will inevitably have to get rid of Flyfish, Big Shot, and Stinger, who all stay far away from the basket, and if left alone, they can be very annoying. Along with that, there's also the risk of overluring. As the name suggests, it's when you lure the bosses too much and end up getting overwhelmed and wiped. There is a fine line between luring and overluring, and it can be hard to grasp at first. While this technique does have pros and cons that may make you want to use it or not, I definitely recommend everyone to try it out at least once or twice, because it can be so good when it's done well. Luring is a strategy I try to implement in my gameplay, but it's hard to find teams that know how to do it, so most of the time I'll have someone killing the boss while I'm trying to get it to the basket. But if you're interested in trying it out, I definitely recommend practicing during rounds with Scrapper or Moz since they're the easiest to lure. If you're unsure about that, you can always try it out in the Not Basics tutorial where you are in a more controlled environment with just that boss. Even though it's hard for freelance players, it's still a very powerful strategy when done well and I really hope more people pick it up. Anyways, I hope you learned something new with this video, don't forget to comment your thoughts, let me know if you've ever tried this technique, don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye